don't have any time for any gossip now. Eh? Yes. Hey guys, I want to address this Tamar situation and Jesse Wu from yesterday. And then I'm going to play an audio because um, I got to actually get ready for a meeting and I want to get into some quick little things. So yesterday, a lot of, I won't say a lot of y'all, a few of you in the comments was like, Jesse did address it. Let me make sure y'all understand something. I live in the city that these people live in. Um, so just because I don't come on and say stuff, when I get information from people, I don't bust them out. You know, I get information from people, but I can't always tell you all where I got the information from, but I may tell it in another um, way, put it that way. Um, so if I tell you something, it's valid. So with regards to the Jesse Wu situation, what I said yesterday on the video before I took it down, because y'all was really getting on my nerves, at least some of y'all was, saying Jesse said why she um why she posted the video late because people was coming at her. That is a lie. That is not why she posted that video late because people was coming at her. That is not why she posted that video. I just didn't tell y'all. So now Tamar has come out and she has spoken about it. I told y'all yesterday that it has something to do with her job. I said that. I said it was something to do with the job, but I didn't go into details because I can't bust out my sources either. Well, the fact of the matter is Jesse Wu had a video and it was circulating at Tamar's job. So Tamar unfollowed Jesse Wu because of some other, I'm sorry, because of that specific video and because of what people were saying at the job. Jesse Wu is messy and she's looking for clout. Yes, Tamar sent those messages, but it's more to the story that meets the eye. Jesse is not telling the full story, and that is why she went back and removed that video. You and me, we've all had friends that get drunk and send us dumb text messages. So Jesse will spin, she spin the narrative to meet her own conclusion and she's looking for clout. And as Tamar said, she's looking to get, um, you know, bring people onto her YouTube channel or whatever it is she's looking to do. So I'm going to get into this audio and also too. Let me um, throw this out there. I don't know who y'all think I am, but let me just give you a very small snippet of my accolades because y'all got me, as some people would say, effed up. Y'all really got me effed up. I don't really come on camera a lot because I'm extremely busy. I have a whole nother two jobs that I do. So a lot of times I just don't have time. So I'm gonna make time to come on camera so y'all can get to know my personality because y'all talk S-H-I-T in my, in my comments and y'all really don't know me. Secondly, I have created a group offline that for my real supporters where we can join and not have to worry with you trolls that's on YouTube. And it's only going to be for my um, select people that we're going to be able to do stuff on another platform where I can speak freely and say what the hell I want because with YouTube, it's censored a lot. Um, so we're gonna, I have created another platform, which I will let you guys know in a few days. So let's get into it. I am not the regular Joe Schmo because I think y'all y'all look in that. See, that's a form of racism. Y'all look at people and you think you know them or you'd be like, oh, she, you know, she looked like this. So I bet, no, you don't know me. So let me run it down. I have been a principal. I have been a teacher. I have created my own school, not just work for somebody. I created it. You know what I, you know what that means? You basically come up with the concept, you hire people, you do all of that. So I did all of that. That was one job that I had. I am a licensed realtor working on getting my broker's license. So I have that going. Um, I help people with their credit. Oh my gosh. That's another one. My other job that I do, I do project manage, management. So I know how to come into organizations and show them how to, um, you know, turn different things around. My degree is master's in organizational leadership. My undergrad is in communications and um, human resources. So 
when I talk on camera, it's a lot better for me. But again, I don't have a lot of time. So I can't a lot of times be on camera because I'm getting ready or I'm doing something else. Um, and you guys should check out my TikTok. My TikTok, I do videos, which I kind of keep separate because on TikTok is where I kind of share my personal life. Um, on YouTube, I'm really talking about the news and little stuff like that. But y'all should check me out on TikTok. That's where you'll really get to know me is on TikTok because I do share a lot of my personal stuff. I just don't do it for here because I kind of want to keep it for the news. And that's what I do. Also, I'm creating another channel. Now I have this channel, which is my main channel. Then I have my backup channel, which is Lakeisha, Lakeisha TV. But I'm also creating another channel because as I have explained to you guys, the multiple things that I have did in my life, my other channel is going to show you how to create other avenues of resources, whether it be on Amazon, whether it be helping you fix your credit, various different things, and you would be able to join that YouTube. However, on that channel, I will not be talking about the news. It's going to be strictly on how you can build other sources of income, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I want want to get into this audio and I didn't have time to look for it. There is a video, but somebody sent it to me. I'm sorry, linked it in my chat. His name is D Smiles. That's D S M I L E Z. Go on his channel and you can actually check out the, the actual video, but I have the audio and I'm going to play it for you because again, I'm not saying Tamar is not messy. Now I never said that, but what I'm saying is Jesse is lying and she's not giving you the full um, concept of what happened. Yes. Tamar sent the messages, but she's not telling you everything. So let's jump into this audio. Um, I um, have been very hesitant to, talk about, you know, the recent allegations um, that has been made about me once again. Um, I um, have been hesitant because this time is not just about gossip. This time is like very personal and extremely hurtful. Um, I'm not coming here to defend my relationship you know, I'm not even coming here to defend JR as a person. People feel how they feel. You know, I know that a lot of people are angry with me about, you know, my own decisions. And, and that's okay. Um, I'm really coming here because I just feel like um, my character has been questioned and... Um, I, I just feel like this is like a, a, a gravy train to assassin, assassinate Tamar character because it's, you know, very easy to do. You know what I mean? I, I guess from watching me from Braxton Family Values for all of these years and, you know, me being who I was on reality television, um, you know, makes people believe that's who you are in real life. You know, and I've been talking about this for years. Um, but what I also have been talking about for years is how much I stand against um, people being bullied, bullying people, treating people um, unkind and unfair. And I believe that has happened to me by my friend or who I thought was my friend, Jesse Wu. Um, and this is the only reason why I'm making this video because now I feel like I have to unfortunately show personal text to defend my character and I, I will not be assassinated under, you know, conditions that are just not the truth. I'm just not going to do that because I work too hard on my mental health. I work too hard on, you know, just making sure I become a better human being. And I'm just not going to stand for it because somebody wants likes and I guess notoriety because I'm, I've am i been trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together um, for these last couple of hurtful days um, because nothing happened. I didn't have a falling out with Jesse. I didn't have a conversation with Jesse since... Um, December, when the last time we filmed together, we don't even film together at Dish Nation. Um, and I don't even have a clue where this is blossoming from. Um, 
we don't have a hostile work environment. This nation is an amazing job. It's, we work with amazing people. Um, I get along with every every single person there. I've, I've never had an argument at this nation. Um, I come in. Um, sometimes I bring food. Sometimes, you know, I, and I speak to every person. I say good morning. I'm usually there first. Um, I say good morning to everyone. Um, we have chit chat, you know, in the hallway, laugh, kiki, talk about diets, talk about life. Um, I invited every single person to my concert, the same concert that Jesse opened up for me two nights in a row. And um, I'm just, I don't know, guys. Um, <clears throat> for once, I am at a loss of words because, you know, I, I just... I feel terrible. I feel terrible because now um, I have to do what somebody has done to me and show personal text. And I said I would never do that, but let's get into it. All right, y'all. So I am taking 100% accountability. What I am saying is crazy. And let me just tell you what I why what I'm saying is crazy. Number one, I am wasted. I am frustrated. I am broken. I am so upset because... The person that we're talking about um, came to the Cinco de Mayo, um, actually my Cinco de Mayo event. Why is, was it my Cinco de Mayo e event? Well, because Cinco de Mayo, fun fact, is Tamar Braxton Day in Houston. So every single year I celebrate Cinco de Mayo and I have an event. Every Tay Martian in the world knows that. So I don't know why she said that this was supposed to be an all girls event. No, ma'am. Not only did she bring her home girls, but other people who worked at Dish Nation was there and they were supposed to bring a spouse too. They just didn't come until we went to the second location. But let's just get into these texts. All of these texts, mind you, this happened in November. This text messages happened in November. The beginning of November. So I don't know why this is coming out now. So you can see through the text, I am not speaking about Jesse. I would never, ever threaten my friend. Okay? So let's get into the second one. So mind you, I'm going in. And the reason why I'm going in is because this person was at the Cinco de Mayo party of mine now, it was only like eight of us okay so i'm feeling like upset i feel you know betrayed like girl like girl your friend who you invited to my party is trying to talk you know to my ex now y'all gotta understand like when you got an ex and first of all me and jay shouldn't have been communicating anyway but we were communicating we was trying to be friends we you know we have a whole family you know together we was trying to be cool you know for the kids or whatever and it, it just wasn't a good idea to, to still try to be friends, right? But I am upset because he is outside. And the reason why I'm still going in is because Jesse said that the girl is not her friend. So I'm not thinking, you know, I'm really saying something wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying something wrong because I'm saying something wrong, but I'm not saying nothing wrong because Jesse said that's not her homegirl. So I'm not disrespecting you, Jesse. Next slide. Y'all not need to hold your I was irate and out of control number one like i said i was drinking i was at home by myself you know what i'm saying i was just going off and the girl name is maggie right and when i talked to jesse on the phone during this whole rant she had told me she don't fuck with that girl and the girl got a boyfriend and the girl be cheating on her boyfriend so the last time she saw her she paid her debts that's not her girl you know what i'm saying so i I promise y'all, I did not know back in November that this would ever come up again when I was in a broken place, thinking I'm in a safe place with my homegirl. And as you can see down below, I'm not tripping because somebody's trying to talk to Jay, right? I'm tripping because this the same person who was cackalacking, throwing them back, having a blast, put us up in her story. As you can see below, you see how she posted this all in the story and i was just like well damn this is what we doing out here like we all gonna hang out together and the second we break up you trying to holler at somebody i just think that is crazy and i just think that just breaks all types of girl codes okay y'all so as you can see me and jess had a conversation the very next day about 
you know, my, my texts to her, you know, when I was upset, right? November 8th at 150, me, hey, sis, love you, upside down. Love you too, you doing better. I said, yeah, Atlanta is toxic. I called her. We talked about this. We laughed, we kikied about it. Like girlfriends, I had no reason to believe. Now, I, I, I don't know. I had absolutely, if you can read, y'all, we are talking like homegirls. I had absolutely no reason to believe that she was offended and felt threaten and I threaten her and her friend oh my god and now now the workspace is toxic you will not you and oh the same racist that oh and the same Santa Claus that when you got drunk at my Cinco de Mayo event carried your big ass down them steps in the rain into Maggie's car. That one, right? Yeah. Like nobody was mean, ever mean to her. Listen, I had her back in her face and behind her back. You know what I'm saying? When everybody, my whole team was like, why is she opening up for you? She she can't sing. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, that's my friend. You know, she's been trying a long time. And I like her and I like her music. I fought for her. Yes, it's my company, but still, you know, like you still got a team. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's giving very much. I, I really did. Was her? I was her biggest cheerleader. I had no idea. So when I unfollowed her, I unfollowed her last week. When her video that she made three weeks ago was circling through this nation and everybody was saying how disrespectful she was about speaking negatively about me. And when I got engaged, because that's why she got unfollowed, because my feelings was hurt. That was my friend. And so publicly, you're speaking negatively about the same racist guy who you call racist, same person who helped you when you was like you threw up at the restaurant, Jesse. It was embarrassing. He helped you, and this is the same person that you were going in. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm lost. As you can see, I'm cheering for her. You know what I'm saying? Like she's in Ghana. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, girl, you're so beautiful and smart, and you funny. I'm trying to encourage my friend. Where do you feel threatened, Linda? She all the way feeling like she's not likable to men. She all the way feeling like she a lost cause. And I'm like, girl, stop saying that the universe is listening. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, it's all a lie. You know what I mean? And then we going on a land of men like everybody else do. Like girlfriends or not. And none of these say nothing about JR. I was not obsessing over him. Why? I had cut off all communication with him after that text, after that night. I'm just going to keep it above with y'all. And with you, Jesse, I unfollowed you because you made a video that was circling around Dish Nation streets and it made its way to me where you were laughing at your friend in front of the world. Somebody who helped you, somebody who supported you, somebody who gave you an opportunity that nobody has ever done. Out the, out the goodness and the kindness of my heart, because I believed in you, you got on YouTube and laughed in my face. Friend. So that's why I unfollowed you. It wasn't about this story that you made up for the fans to make people think that you know, I'm a horrible person because you said yourself. I love Tamar. I work with Tamar. Tamar has been nothing but nice to me. Yeah, I'm, I've been nothing but nice to you. So which one is it? Is it that you feel threatened and I threaten you and your friend and I'm this horrible person. I make your work environment horrible and you will have peace and I don't bring peace to the table. Or is it? That I'm a nice person. I love Tamar. I work with Tamar. Tamar has been nothing but nice to me. And I've been nothing but nice to you. You said that December. Those text messages happened in November. So why are you doing this? What are you doing? Because I don't know where any of this came from. I watched the video in horror along with y'all. Like, 
where is this coming from? Because first of all, she said, I, she will have peace in the workspace. When has there not been peace? We've never had a falling out at Dish Nation. She said, I got my friend um, hired at Dish. I guess she was trying to imply that I wanted, you know, to kind of um, beef up my team over there. No, I, I met Darius on the Queen's Court. I saw him at Dish Nation when he, when he got hired at Dish Nation. And then he started working for me part time to do my social media. So that is how that happened, you know? And then she said that she is Elani Love. She's worse. That we do agree on. We definitely agree on. I do believe that you're worse than Lonnie Love because out of everything that ever happened with me and the girls from The Real, who I am really good friends with to this day, she's never shared a personal text message. And she also said on The Breakfast Club that I am a good person. And then I know Tamar because she's a good person. She never lied and said that I caused the work environment to be hostile like you did. You're absolutely right on that. And also, what another thing that you lied about, Miss Thing, was that um, the girl would never be interested in Jay, whatever, whatever, because we met, they all was, all y'all was at um, an all black girl, whatever you said. No, he never told me that. He said that they ran into each other at a restaurant, MCK, I believe. Um, and so if that's what she told you, I guess she was trying to lie to you. Well, y'all not friends, so I don't know. Y'all friends, not be friends, could be friends. I don't know. That's, I don't know. But I'm just appalled, Jesse, because you were the main person who came to me and told me that I was right about Candy. And you get up here and tell these people that I accuse Candy of something that you know, that you know happened to me and I I just can't believe I don't know where this is coming from I don't know what the angle is but I will not allow you to let people think that I cause your work environment to be hostile when the last time we shot was that day of JR's Christmas party that I didn't invite you to JR and I had just gotten back together you wasn't invited sweetie I invited Cherry I invited Darius and I also invited Travis and I also invited my hairstylist Ebony who could not come. We were in the hall. First of all, you didn't catch me saying nothing foul about nobody in the elevator. Why? Because I don't do that. I like everybody I work with. Now, what foul stuff do I have to say about any anybody? We're going to a Christmas party. We're excited to go. We're about to have a ball. And in general talking, I did ask you what you was doing. Isn't that a, a general thing to say to somebody that you're friendly with, Jesse? Yes, it is. And if I invited you, sweet pea, pumpkin pie, why didn't I send you the invite or the address? I, I got to be messy about a Christmas party? Like, come on, like... That sounds, was I messy when I invited you to open up for me on my Love and War tour? Sold out show for two days? Was I messy then? Huh? No. So how can my intentions for you change? Because your intentions for me changed. And I think that that's the problem. I think the problem is, is that, you know, you don't know how to be a friend. You don't know how to be loyal. You don't know how to be kind. You don't know how to show love because you didn't show me grace. You didn't show me love because you sat up here and you made up this fiasco story because you knew that people were upset about me getting engaged and going back with JR. And you knew they would click on your little YouTube page. So y'all go follow her. Look, I still think she's talented. I still like her music. Download her music and make, make her the superstar she's trying to be. But this time, make her the superstar on her own right and on, on her own talents. Because you are talented. And you know what else? I wish you well. God bless you. I'm still coming to Dish Nation. This is my week. Last week was your week. I didn't interrupt your week. I didn't cause havoc over there. Because you haven't been to work since the beginning of December. <laughs> you know? So I don't even know where this is happening. Anyway, 
I'm going to have a blast at Dish Nation. I'm going to enjoy my time with my other co-hosts, Gary with the tea and the bread and head crack and Tanner Banner. You know, I'm going to have a blast behind the scenes with the staff and I'm going to live my life. And I'm never, ever going to think about this moment again, because what you're not going to do is use my past to make people think that what you're doing is true. You're dead ass wrong for what you're doing. I want to reiterate this video is not about me defending my relationship with JR. This has nothing to do with this. This has everything to do with the fact that, Jesse, you were my friend. Nothing happened to where you would have to go on Beyonce's internet and share personal texts between you and I from a text that happened in the beginning of November. I can understand if you felt threatened now. I can understand that you felt like I was spiraling out of control now, but you know, and I know that that is not the case. I was truly brokenhearted going through a very public, humiliating breakup. And I was venting to my homegirl. Why shouldn't that be a safe place for me? You have vented to me and I kept it safe for you. What's the cause? What's the point?